All right, so we've got Avi, we've got Dr. Evan Allen. They're going to talk about whether COVID uh, came from animal agriculture or animal consumption. Uh, no one else is going to talk. We're just going to mute everyone and let them speak. So with that, I'll pass it to you guys. How are you doing, Evan? I'm doing well, thank you. How about yourself? Not too bad, not too bad. So we spoke a bit on Twitter, and just this is, this is a much better way of discussing things than tweeting out. Um, so essentially my position is I get it, um, t from nothing. If you were to just look at the past and you were to look at, um, the track record, um, I probably would lean toward markets. Um, I probably lean toward markets for SARS one, uh, based on the civets, civet cats. I don't even know if I'm pronouncing that right. Um, the issue that's leading me to an agnostic position here is that specifically with SARS-CoV-2, there are several lines of evidence that are problematic for the market, uh, the Wuhan market hypothesis. Um, and that leads me to require a more detailed analysis comparing other methods of non-market interactions versus market interactions. And we, if you want, we can get into the specifics of the problematic issues with either the pangolin intermediate or the market hypothesis, like a direct market hypothesis, whichever one it is, which aren't oh. present, which aren't present in SARS-CoV-1. In, in original SARS, the, there, are, there are not these issues that are problematic for COV-2. So if I can just say what I think you're saying, is that okay? Evan, you, you cut out. You got to keep the space bar down if that's your first to talk. Can I, can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you now. So just, can I try to reiterate what I think you're saying so that I make sure yeah. I have you understood correctly? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I think you're saying that you agree that SARS-1, for lack of a better, more specific term, came from wet markets where civets were kept as animals. Is that correct? I lean, I would say I lean in that direction. I don't take a, I'm not taking this hard stance. I would say it's more likely, I would say I, it's more likely in the not from my, from my perspective based on several lines of evidence. I lean in that direction. Yes. So lean means you think it's 50%, 60%, 70%. I don't have an exact, I don't, I don't have an exact, I don't have an exact number. I can, I do think it's more likely than not. I can tell you it's over. I can give you, I can say it's over 50%. I, I don't have a formal analysis to really granulate it. So I don't, I don't have an, I don't have a view on exactly what percentage it is. When I say lean, I mean at the very least more likely than 50. So for me, that is like a 99.9% .9 number. So I think we should discuss why I think that's 99.9% .9 when you think it could be anywhere between 50 and 70% before we move on to SARS-CoV-2, because that seems like where, um, you know, from a Bayesian perspective, if I'm viewing it that way, that's going to really affect how we view the downstream probabilities. Okay, how do you get to 99%? Okay, well, there's a um, case report of a restaurant where uh, they kept live civets that they had bought from a market in Guangzhou. They tested the civet. It had the virus. They tested a waitress. She had a 99.9% .9 similar virus. Yep. And they tested two patrons who also got it, and they had the same virus. Now, to me, mm -hmm. that markedly increases the likelihood that the civet was the intermediate host and that the wet markets were the – because civets are, are, you know, they're isolated. They're wild creatures that don't normally congregate in crowds. So the only place that they're going to have coronavirus evolution is when they're all kept – in cages next to one another. And so the, I mean, the assessment of the WHO at the time and the assessment of most people who've looked at it since is that it is, it is not just more likely than not, but highly likely that civets were the intermediate host between bats and humans. 
I'm okay with that. I just don't understand how you get to 99%. Um, are well, you getting I, that to 99%? So you think because the restaurant anecdote is not strong enough evidence? No, I, I do think it's strong enough evidence. I, 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 I could even say I strongly lean in that direction. Um, but So you would say that it is not unreasonable in any way for anyone to ascribe SARS-1 to the civet intermediary with bats as the original host. Is that correct? Yeah, it's not unreasonable to do that. Um, I the only and wrinkle someone... to that is the only wait, 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 the only wrinkle to that I would say is that um, I just don't know with what strength of confidence I would I would confidently um, I think it's a very reasonable conclusion to say I think I would be okay with confidently saying it I don't I just don't know how I would get to ninety nine percent confidence on that um, so I. I I, don't, I, I still haven't heard a clear answer from you how you get to 99% confidence. I've heard that you have 99% homology, which I, which sure, I agree. I'm aware of that. Yeah. With civets, you have a 99% gene homology with SARS-1 uh, and with the, with humans, the, with the SARS-1 that they found in humans. Um, I don't see how that gets you to a 99% confidence that it came from civets. Um, Unless you well, have, I'm uh, saying it came from bats. Yeah, I know. I understand. It's an intermediate. Yeah, yeah I, I get it. We're an but, intermediate mammalian host. Yeah. So one of the reasons is because of the ACE2 uh, difference between bats and humans, where civets have an ACE2 that is very similar to humans. And so when we look at the... You mean the spike protein. You're not talking about ACE2. You're, you're talking about the spike protein that binds to ACE. You are I'm receptor also talking binding. about the differences in the ACE2 uh, receptors in humans, bats, and other mammals. Bats differ substantially in their ACE2 receptor compared to those other mm -hmm. animals. Okay. So as far as I know, and you can correct me if you have other information, there's no direct transmission that's been established between bats and humans with any coronavirus. So I, I, I know that bats are the primary source, but there's been an intermediate in every case where we have established how the transmission took place from bats to humans. Well, to be fair, we don't have that many cases. Um, it's true, we, have we two. Yeah, we have, we have two cases and one we don't know. We have, so we have a sample size of N1 where we have Data, the strongest data we have is a sample size of N1. The contention, the data in contention here is the other case. So well, what I would say I, is we don't... Wait a minute. Yeah, so, well, uh, uh, let's back up. We're, we're still not talking about COVID yet. So I'm still sure. talking about SARS-1. I'm still talking about that too. So with SARS-1, you think that uh, someone who said, we still don't know the intermediate for SARS-1 is reasonable. Yeah, there are other intermediates that are that are posed. I'm not sure. I don't have a view on if they're reasonable because I haven't looked into the phylogeny of the other hosts, but I do know that there are other hosts other than civets that are, that are posed. I also, I also know that there, I, I have seen, uh, some say that, uh, direct transmission is, was still on the table. Now I haven't, now I'll be frank that I haven't looked into SARS-1, um, in depth, in as much depth as I have with SARS-2. Um, so that's fine. I can go and do a deep dive in SARS-1. Okay. Well, I think if you do a deep dive on SARS-1, you will probably increase your belief that SARS-1 came from civets. Sure. Well, for the sake of the conversation. There was also rather... one other postulated intermediate yeah. host, but it's also a mammal, and it's also one that's frequently kept in wet markets. But for the sake of the, for the, sake of the argument, we could, we could grant the claim. Okay, so we'll grant that uh, SARS-1 came to humans from bats through civets. Yeah, most mo overwhelmingly likely. Again, all these okay. things are going to be on a spectrum of, of likeliness. We can go with it. We can even go with a very, very likely or something. Perfect. I, I don't see 99%, but I, we, I, we can go with ex exceptionally likely. We can go 90%. So, I, I don't know. I don't have it. I... Let's look at MERS next. So MERS, what is your take on Again, I, I don't think it, um, I think it's attributed to a camel, um, if, I'm, if I'm not mistaken. So it's not just attributed to a camel. It's almost 100% certainly from camels. 
How do you know There's that? almost no debate. Virtually no, everybody no debate. who got like, murdered I, was taking care of sick camels. Okay, and? And those camels had the same MERS virus, like the, the same virus. All right, what's the, the therefore, therefore what? Therefore, camels got it from bats, and camels gave it to humans in MERS. Okay. And yeah, but in all of these cases, okay, so okay. what was the gene? So, let me just so ask you. Let's just... the, wait, 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 one second. One second. Okay. So where, nah, okay, let's grant that claim too. Fine. We'll, gr we'll grant the claim. We have two cases. Okay, where, great. Where, yeah, now therefore what? So wait, so we have, we have four endemic coronaviruses in humans. Correct? I'm not sure if it's four. Um, well, that's what I've read, is that there are four. There are other, like, inactivated. I think there are other inactivated ones, but, but okay. Go. So, so those four, we don't know where they came from because they've been circulating an endemic for a long time. They generally cause milder illnesses. Um, but it would also not be unreasonable that those might also originally have originated from a mammalian intermediate from bats. Their phylogeny does suggest that. So those four, we don't know for sure, so we'll put them off the table. But since 2000, we've had now three pandemic, or not pandemic, three epidemics and one mm -hmm. pandemic of coronaviruses. And two of those three, I think personally, that's my personal opinion looking at the data, indisputably come originally from bats through another mammalian intermediary. Yeah, we can so, grant the claim. I, I still don't. I still so think that there's. You know, so just if you're doing a simple Bayesian analysis of probabilities, that increases the pre evaluation probability of this having the same pathway into humans by yeah, a substantial yeah. margin. Yeah, I, I can grant that claim, and it's there's still. I still don't get to the conclusion because of the symmetry breaker. And okay. We can go through, and we can go through that. So. One of the complaints that you have is that the pangolins that had the coronavirus that was similar to the SARS-CoV-2 were Malayan pangolins. Is that right? Well, just one, just that's one of them. But that's just to be clear on the claim. The the pangolins were. It's not just that they um, were similar. They weren't similar. It they the receptor binding protein was similar. The actual genome homology was far less similar. Not only was it less similar than the bat candidate, it was less similar than the, the other cases that have been shown to be intermediates. So when you look at civets, you see something like a 99% gene homology. Um, I haven't looked at the gene homology for camels, um, but it, I wouldn't it, expect it was 100%. Yeah, like 100%. When you look at pangolins, the ge overall gene homology wasn't even clo wasn't close to that. It was well, less so, than that. So that's in, in one research. There's other unpublished research that's been reported in the lay press that there are scientists who have found a 99% homology. Oh, I, can, you, can you link me that? In, um, and in, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Because everything I've seen consistently has been like nowhere close to 99% gene homology. So I, I would need to see where this is coming from. Sorry, I'm looking for, um, and I'm using my space bar to push to talk, so it's messing up my browser. No, all right, we can wait. No, it's fine. Um, you don't, we can, I, I'll wait for this evidence. Like, this is evidence I've been looking for for some time. Okay, so, but that is not published data. Okay. But, is it a preprint? Interestingly, well, interestingly, so in, in October. Wait, Evan, one second. Wait, wait, before we go on. Um, it, is it a preprint? The data. No, it. What is it then? It's reported in the lay press that there are scientists in China who had already done an, a, a study in October of pangolin uh, viruses. Do you remember there where the sources are? Dead... That I have an I have an article for somewhere on Google Scholar that I can link to you. But 
that this article was published before SARS-CoV-2 came out. It was analyzing the viromes of dead pangolins that were found in in the wild animal trade in China. They were all Malayan pangolins because that is what 99% of the pangolins that are consumed in China are because the Chinese pangolin is virtually extinct. Okay. And these Malayan pangolins had died of either the Sendai virus or a coronavirus. And that these authors, prior to SARS-CoV-2 coming out, had compared the Sendai virus that was found in pangolins to human-carried asymptomatic Sendai virus, which also kills rodents, and was found uh, to be most homologous to the human Sendai virus. Okay, wait, wait, wait. So when we talk about... Um, this Was this... Um the Sendai virus. Um, uh, that's, a, that's a paro-influenza virus. Right. And so the, that's all I'm saying. I'm, I'm not establishing that Sendai has any relation to SARS-CoV-2. I'm just saying this establishes that these pangolins could both transmit forward and backward viruses to humans of a t- respiratory type. Okay. So and I, then I, I, in I, I, the I same it. study, they looked at the coronaviruses that the pangolins had and they found that they were similar to human coronaviruses that existed in humans as endemic. But these are not SARS-CoV-2 viruses. They're different. At least, there's, of course, there's no explanation of it being related to SARS-CoV-2 in October of 2019 because nobody had heard of it back then. Okay. So I guess, my, the, biggest, um, I guess the biggest thing at this point, the biggest symmetry breaker um, for, in this case is that um, would just be that non-published data for me to get my hands on. Um, so I take the point about the um, the Chinese pangolin being extinct. If they're really just going into in mass, they are going into um, what's it called? They're going into uh, Indonesia or they're going into Malaysia, um, and they're just importing a bunch of pangolins. Fair enough. Um, the only That's problem at that really point, which is a symmetry yeah. breaker, still. Um, and would be need to to be a, 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 a something that needs to be dealt with, and you seem to think that there is a way of dealing with it, and I'd like to see that data. Um, so is so you the, have- the glaring problem is that in all of these other cases where there was an intermediate, um, the overall gene homology was very strikingly sig- significantly the same, and all the published data I've seen shows that it's nowhere near that with the pangolins. So. so- so the I first would need to, to, I, so I really you know just want that to see the, the source. I want to see where this is coming from. Okay. Well, it, the sources exist. I'm sorry I can't just link them right here, but I, they do exist. Um, the there are a couple of other lines of evidence to me that are very strong that do implicate the Wuhan wet market. So number one is that over two thirds of the initial cases mm-hmm. prior to January one were individuals yep. who had direct links to that market. Yep, there's a problem, though. Go ahead. So the problem is the patient who had the first, ca- uh, the first symptomatic case by a factor of 10 days from two other patients, one did, who did not have contact and one who did, the earliest traced patient did not have contact with um, the wet market. Now... Could it be that the, the patient 10 days later, one of the patients 10 days later that did have contact with the wet market was just asymptomatic during that period and really had it before the first trace case? It could be. But if you look at the um, probability distribution of the asymptomatic period, it's the chance of that, the chance of any individual carrying the virus for an asymptomatic period of 10 days or longer, it's about 10% or less around there. Um, so it's possible, um, but then we can make the same argument, well, maybe the first trace case was asymptomatic for a long period as well. The, the glaring problem, and I'll put, I can share this data with you if you're looking in general chat at all, um, but this was actually in, my first, in the first tweet that I made about being skeptical of it. This was really the, the second problem, actually, was that if you look at all the cases that came from the market, the earliest case did not come from the market. So, which which opens up the possible, and it didn't come from the market by a decent margin. Um, 
in t- and by that I mean that there was a reasonable de- de- a long delay, 10 days between that case and the first case that did come from the market, which opens the possibility that it was brought to the market rather than coming from the market. Okay, so... So, okay, so you're saying that you think that it might have been brought from where to the market? Somewhere outside out of the market. I don't need to have an explanation of, I don't need to have an explanation of where it came from in order for me, for this data to cast doubt that it came from the market. So, so, so yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. So two thirds of the initial people before mm-hmm. January one having contact with the market, for you means that the market was an intermediate host as well. So again, the reason the reason why I take the data to actually be a problem rather than supporting evidence for the market is because I don't. If you look at the distribution of all those patients, I, yes, it's true that two thirds came from the market. But not all of those patients are weighted equally for evidence with respect to it coming from the market or not from the market. The most weighted evidence will be the patients coming from the earliest temporal period, because obviously with the new outbreak, the first cases are going to transmit it to other people, not the other way around. So for example, just to give you an extreme example, and this is not what the data is, but hypothetically, if 99% of the cases came from the market, but there was a 30-day time delay between case one and 99, case, case two through 99, um, it would clearly indicate that it did not come from the market, even though 99% of the cases were found in the market, of the first cases came from the market. What's more important is the temporal pattern of it rather than the sheer number of cases. And when you when look you at look the at temporal, temporal stratification, stratification, you see that there's a glaring issue. First case, by, a fact, by 10 days, did not come from the market. And there was no earlier traceable case that did come from the market. Okay. So you're saying the first case didn't come from the market and you know enough about that person to know that they couldn't have had any contact with pangolins outside the market. No, I'm not saying that. Um, they, they could have had contact with pangolins. They could have had contact with bats, but I don't, but again, I don't know that this, all I know is, all I know about this person is they didn't have contact from the market. Um, and do you know that they awesome. didn't go to the market? I know they didn't have, like, the, the literature says that the per- individual did not have contact with the wet market. I can pull the study for you if you want. Here. I didn't have direct contact. I get that. But no, it didn't say direct I mean, contact. It didn't say, wait, wait, wait. It didn't say direct contact. It said did not have contact. Well, but he lived in Wuhan or she lived in Wuhan. I actually don't even know that either. Okay, well, the first cases were all reported in Wuhan. I understand they were reported in Wuhan. I don't know, and I I grant that it's plausible or even likely that they lived in Wuhan, but I don't think it commented on whether the first case lived. Well, do you know how long the market had been open? No, I don't know. So the market opened in October, November. Okay. And was closed by mid-January. So to me, that's also fairly compelling data that the market was a source. And it it is entirely possible there could be more than one source. Um, If if again, there was a there are many restaurants in China that serve pangolin and have live pangolins in the back and they buy them from the market. So I just don't see how that addresses this critique. Well, okay, you're saying this couldn't have come from. Or you're well, I'm not, not saying, saying it couldn't, it couldn't have come from. You're saying there's there's equipoise. You can't say one way or the other whether we can say confidently this came from pangolins or some other mammalian intermediate, just like all the other COVs from the 21st century, right? Or even, or even. Um... Or even bats, given that the only other two cases were intermediates, and there, but there was only n equals two. Okay, um, but do so you I don't know. know the, do you know the bat level of homology is like ninety percent? No, it's not. Yeah. Oh, an overall R- gene R- homology? R- no, it's not. Three. Yeah. In over? No, it's not. 
Yes, it is. Okay, let's we can go to the literature on this right now. Yeah, yeah, and it's mean, not ninety percent. No, okay. it's not. Let's go. I, I, here, here, I'll pull it. It's um, it's 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 uh, it's about ninety ninety at least ninety six percent. Um, here, it's so, not more. So you're saying bat homology? The bat overall gene. Can you? You're I'm saying sorry, bat you homology me? is higher. Mm -hmm. Than pangolin homology, right? You know, in gene homology, overall gene homology, absolutely, hundred percent. Oh yeah, oh, I agree with that. That's correct. Yeah. I'm, so I'm, the, but, you're talking about the receptor binding protein. I get it. But the key is the ACE two binder. Okay, so I'm not. I get the mechanistic idea behind that. I'm not a hundred percent sold um, that that makes that that supersedes the overall gene homology. And I understand why people would think that because that's what binds to the ACE2 and that's what caught, le leads to the infection. I get it. Um, but if you look, it, but if you empirically examine all the all the cases where this has quote unquote been shown, the overall gene homology is still striking. The overall gene homology you don't see something as low as ninety two percent or ninety one percent. I'm not, and I'm not convinced that I'm not necessarily convinced that the homology of the receptor binding protein necessarily trumps the homology of the uh, of the overall genome. So you know that sorry I really have problems with using the space bar on this. So the overall homology has uh, some significant differences and those differences are much larger in the non-coding sections between bats and humans. So in other words- Wait, are you talking about homology of the receptor or are you talking about homology no, of- I'm talking about an overall genome homology. I agree with you that bats, the RATG13, I believe it is, which is the closest mm -hmm. one to SARS-CoV-2, that has a closer overall homology to the human SARS-CoV-2 than some of the coronaviruses that are found in the pangolin pool. But again, this other research shows that they, they claim to have a 99% uh, uh, homology virus. So if they have that... Are they talking about whole genome? Wait, wait, wait. Your source that you posted. Are you talking, Because I've heard that this was posted. I've heard, I've heard it reported that this was a misreporting. I've heard it that... I've heard it... Um, I have a source that said that there were reports that it was 99%, but then when they looked into it, it wasn't whole gene homology. It was actually just the receptor binding protein. That there was a okay, so let's, going around. let's grant let's grant that the ninety nine percent homology is only on the ACE two receptor binding protein. Okay. So the differences between and, and have you seen the images where it actually shows the the gene yes. lineup between pangolins? Are you talking about this? Talking about, um, RATG thirteen. Uh, uh, are you talking about this picture? Hold on, let me let me pull it. So um, I can post it in general. Are you looking at general chat? Um, are you talking I don't about know. the paper that has like this stuff? Like, um, yeah, yeah. So, so if you look at the gene homology for the ACE receptor there, there are, I believe, only two uh, different loci that are different between the ACE and ACE uh, two receptor for the pangolin virus and the ACE two receptor for the human virus which is the closest homology between the human virus and any other uh, of the bat viruses, much closer than RATG13. What is the um, overall percentage of homology for RATG13? I, I, I recall it being between 94 and 96% between that and SARS-CoV-2. But the majority of the homology is in... Um, highly conserved areas. And if you look at the uh, unconserved areas, there's a lot of difference, suggesting a divergence time almost of uh, five or 10 years from one of the papers that I read. But I'm not even going to, I'm, I'm not even going to worry about that because there is very good evidence of uh, coronavirus recombination happening. And there is evidence that the, um, the, um, Receptor area, uh, the um, uh, I'm forgetting the name of the, 
but in the paper it describes it. The part where you bind to the ACE2, that that is- The um, cleavage point or, or? No, not the furin cleavage point, but the actual receptor binding area is, is high, high level of evolution. So it evolves more quickly than the rest of the uh, viral genome. Okay. Um, let me see if, uh, if this paper discusses that. Um, I'll have to see that. Uh, so, okay. So the argument is that, okay, this area evolves more quickly. Um, therefore, the similarity would expect the more, the similarity of it would trump, would supersede the similarity of whole genome. Uh, so even if the whole genome was, was, uh, was of lesser homology, um, the, the uh, rapidity of the evolution of the receptor binding protein, um, because it's more rapid, uh, therefore it would supersede it. I need to see if you think we're going to see that follow. Uh, no. the, wait, the, wait, one the, second. One, wait, wait, wait. One, before we go to another claim. Um, okay, so I'll need to see just how, like, okay, I need to see a couple things. I need to see how quickly that's evolving. I'll need to see if it actually, fo if that actually follows, because if it is really evolving, um, okay, I see, I, I see what you're saying. Um, now the other issue still, is that the, wait, 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 one second, one second. Um, the other, the other issue is it still, it still requires an explanation as far as, as far as why in all the other cases you were so similar in overall gene homology. In this case, you're not. Um, I would need to see how quickly it is in it and if that inference is being made from for, for that reason. Because I've I've been reading this paper and I haven't seen that mentioned here. So I, 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 okay, I gotta, I'd like to see that. I gotta say at one level, um, I can understand you not wanting to be uh, to overstep your skis and not to make claims that don't make any sense. But can you at least at this point say that it is neither crazy nor unrealistic to suggest that the WHO is correct in assuming that the wet market was the source of the virus. Oh, I never, listen, Evan, I, I've never at any point indicated that it was uh, crazy or incorrect, that the, um, that the, that this was a, a very plausible candidate and we should, we should definitely lock it, shut it down. Um, nor do I contend that you know, animal agriculture in general makes us susceptible and vulnerable to these pandemics, and we probably avoid a lot of them if we didn't have animal agriculture. Okay, so what? Yeah, I mean, I, I agree with that. the The issue, the and, specific. And you, yeah. you agree that animal agriculture is likely the source of SARS CoV two, or at least we're 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 going to plant that on the table as the saying. It's highly likely. Well, I don't, I don't know, and, I don't know if I don't. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Well, you said we stipulate that for this discussion anyway. SARS CO we talked about SARS, not SARS CV2. Right. That's for original right. SARS, animal agriculture yeah. is the cause. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, for that's, that's, that's animal agriculture is the cause. Animal consumption, but yes. Well, I mean caring for camels also. Camels are No no no, are, no I'm or, talking about but, but like civet hunting is like I um Well civet cultivation is really the, the issue. Okay, if if they oh, that's true. If they were cultivating if they were cultivating the civets, then fine, animal agriculture, sure. Yeah, and 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 um, husbandry of camels is the cause of MERS. Sure, that's fine. Um, so wait, so wait, wait, it's just not one second. Reasonable then to go. Yeah, forward. I'm not saying I never said it wasn't unreasonable. But my issue here's what my issue was. Like, oh, here's my issue was from the, from the get go. The issue from the get go for me was that unlike in MERS, unlike in SARS, there are there are two main problems with um, the going market theory. Uh, that didn't exist in other cases, that didn't exist in SARS, didn't exist in MERS. And because of that, I still think it's plausible, and I still think it's reasonable to uh, say that this is something that it really could have been, and it really is plausible to make that statement. Um, I'm not sold... I'm, first of all, the thing I'm definitely contending with is the strength that I hear people making the claim. I hear people making the claim almost to the same degree of certainty that SARS and MERS came from their respective places with res when they make claims about SARS-CoV-2. And I think that is an, an overreach of certainty. I don't think, if you think it's 99% that SARS um, was from civets, I don't think you would get to the conclusion that SARS-CoV-2 is 99% from a pangolin intermediate or, in a, or from the wet market. 
and Um, okay, we're getting multiple complaints that people can't hear Avi. Can you hear me? Uh, I actually can hear you now. I think that Avi okay. is not in the call though, so I'd assume he's just gonna reboot and show up in a second. I'm sorry. Yeah, something weird is going on. We probably need to start back over from the point where he was describing the symmetry breakers because most of that I didn't get. Yeah, what, one sec, I'm not equipped to have the discussion. I'm just gonna get him to get back in here. Okay, so he's just sent me a message on Facebook. He says the Discord isn't working. It's going to take a minute to see what's up here. Is it possible for me to, like, clip images into here or not yeah no absolutely um if you look at the little plus sign sort of in the message bar it's like at the left side you can attach a file like that so unless it's some ginormous file you should be fine So just for when he gets back, that's the viral homology. And you can see pangolin is in red below all the pinks. The pinks are all human. 
and the pangolin is the line in red. And you can see there's only uh, two significant differences for the receptor area. Okay, well, looks like we're having trouble with Avi right now. Um, I don't know how you want to proceed. We could just reunite at some point when he shows up again. If you want to wait, we can wait. Um, what what do you what do you prefer? Twenty five more minutes. Um, but I mean, obviously, <laughs> it's uh, it's pretty hard to dance by yourself. Yeah, of course. Um, well. He says he's trying, but uh, he's having some kind of internet problem over there. So I think uh, maybe what would be best is just for now, we'll shut it down. We'll pick it back up at another time because, yeah, he's there. He goes again. He's saying he can't connect. So, yeah, I don't think can we're going to have a debate a, partner for you. Can I just make a quick like summation of my case? So oh, yeah, anything... absolutely. Sure. OK, so my case that. I think you can fairly confidently say that the wet market was the source of the virus is firstly, uh, you know, SARS came from a wet market and, and I don't know what, where anybody who looked at the data would be skeptical about the civet source for that. I think that's very highly likely. So in that one, you have bat to civet to human. And then in MERS, again, I just don't think there's any way anybody can look at all the data and not see bat to camel, to human. So the bats that carry this virus are found very commonly around Wuhan and are also commonly found in Malaysia and in Indonesia, where the pangolin is as a native species. But pangolins don't transmit viruses to one another normally because they're solitary creatures. So they're, they're probably don't have great immune systems. And in, in, you know, all the literature on pangolins, uh, trying to raise them in captivity is almost impossible because they just die in captivity all the time. So the wet market is a place hey, where they're sorry, bringing sorry to, sorry to cut sorry. in. Don't mean to be rude. Avi just popped back into the room. We will, of course, let you continue that statement. Avi, let me just unmute you and see if this works now. Can you talk? Are you there? There. Hello. Can you hear me? Okay, you're you're good oh, now. Wow. Let's let a, let's let Evan yeah. continue though. He was he was doing okay. a, a wrap up, but you know. Oh, why do we have to do a wrap up? We could just continue. Well, I think he was. Yeah, I'm fine to continue. Okay, sure. Well, just continue however you want. Then oh. I'll step out. Uh, I mean, okay. I, I can finish up what I was saying there, and and I'm sure that it wouldn't have been any news to you, Avi. It was just my sort of closing idea. Okay. I I mean I he. What I was saying, I don't know at what point in time I cut off. Um, when you started what, talking about symmetry breakers regarding the timeline. Okay, so because of what I wanted to say is that at no point did I think that this is not a plausible candidate. I do think it's a plausible candidate. I admit I'm not sure on the exact likelihood of the probability, but because of the symmetry breakers between SARS-CoV-2 and animal, looking into animal agriculture compared to MERS or SARS, I think my position is just that we shouldn't be claiming this came from animal agriculture with the same degree of confidence as we are, as we can claim with SARS, with MERS, with swine flu, with avian flu, with mad cow disease. Even though it's clear that overall, these markets should be closed down. And it's clear to me overall that we should be eliminating animal agriculture even if not for this reason, it's still clear that if we eliminated animal agriculture, we have far less pandemics. That much I agree with. That much is true. The only thing I, I take issue with is because of these two glaring issues that question that shed doubt on this animal agriculture, I don't think we should be going and claiming it with the same confidence as if it's surely, oh, it's like it's so obvious that this came from animal agriculture. It should be presented as a, in my view, a plausible candidate and a reasonable, it was, I think it's reasonable to, especially when this first started coming out, with, before we understood those glaring problems, as something that would be a prime suspect. Um, at this point, I think we, we need to hold our breath a little bit for more data because of these problems that didn't exist with these other um, 
Okay, so uh, I just want to clear up in my head because I know that the timeline for you is an issue uh -huh. and the overall homology is an issue. Are there other symmetry breakers that are an issue? Um, the other, I mean, let me think. Um, right now, no. Right now, I think those are the two main... Um, since I know there's investigations in other in other areas um, the the virus um, I I think this is we I know that right the United States uh, came out and they started the source um, but I don't very think hard to hear Evan are you able to tell what okay, he's saying wait, wait. Uh, Yes, I think I pieced it together, but I, yeah, I'm okay. sure. Wait, wait, wait. What about what about you... now? Hold on. Uh, yeah. Try switching over to your LTE, like your cell phone Wi-Fi stuff, maybe. Uh, hello. I'm sorry. Right, can you guys hear me now? Does it work now? You sound Perfect. better Sounds so far. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, the only one other wrinkle this is, and I, I'm just only saying this, I don't say this because I think this is, like, plausible. I'm just saying this in case it just, this this unexpected curveball does actually end up panning out, and I don't, and I just want to, I wanted to make sure I'm keeping all options open. I know the United States came out saying that they are, like, invest. they don't think it's true, but they're investigating, like, this possibility that, it came from an animal testing in Wuhan. Um, I don't actually think that's the case. Um, but it, it, the only thing I'm saying is barring any future data. But for now, it's the, for me, it's the two symmetry breakers that I don't see are sufficiently addressed that were not the case for these other outbreaks. Yeah, so those, it would be those two. Okay, so my response to the symmetry breakers, would you like to hear that? Sure. So for symmetry breaker one, you're talking about a single case. And at the time that they did the contact tracing on that, they might not have investigated his association with restaurant eating. And, uh, you know, we know from the SARS epidemic that it wasn't known that civets were uh, an intermediary initially. And they only did later research to figure out that significant numbers of the early cases had eaten at a restaurant that served civets. Restaurants that serve pangolin are quite common in China. I mean, not as common as Taco Bell is here, but not rare, not unheard of. How, co so, how do you have any like? Can you can you tell me like how common it is? Like, can you give me like some kind of numbers? Um, no, you say it's I common. Can't. I can just say in a city of eleven million people, you would find more than one. Well, okay, but that's so not. So you don't, I don't get know. The well, we don't know anything about this person, and it's entirely possible. No, 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 no. I'm not asking about the person. I'm asking about, like, you, you said, like, a um, restaurant serving pangolin in Wuhan is common. I, I'm just asking, how. what do you mean by common? How common are we talking? I mean, not surprising to find in, in, in a city of 11 million people. If there was one, that's enough that he would not have needed contact with the market. Okay, but that's not telling me that that's common. I, I, so I, I would well, I would want to see like okay yeah I mean I, I want to see more like. Let's okay. we'll say I'm agnostic about whether he might have gotten mm -hmm. it from sure a restaurant. Okay. So then you you and I I think both agree that there's no question that the primary source reservoir for this virus is bats. Right? Yeah, I agree with that. So, and we know that bats are consumed in cuisine in China. Yeah, unclear if, the, if there were bats in the Wuhan wet market, but yes, there are, there are bats that are consumed in cuisine in China, correct? Yeah, my personal opinion is that it is very unlikely from all the other information that I put out that it came directly from bats to humans. But if it didn't come from another mammalian intermediary, your position is it did come from bats directly to humans. Is that right? I would tend to, um, at this point, I would tend to, actually, at this point, I would be agnostic about that. Um, 
I, I, le I think that's a reasonable possibility based on the overall gene homology. Um, and at this point, I would say I probably don't know. Um, yeah. But I mean, you, you, so there are different probabilities to different hypotheses. The hypothesis For that sure. Satan created the virus is a very low prior probability, right? So Wait, the, the I possibility that I wouldn't yeah, yeah, publish yeah, sure, a paper sure. that yeah, said yeah, Satan created this virus. No, no, no. I, I I agree with that. I agree with that. It's just I used to I used to um um what's it called um yeah. So I, at this point, I would be. I think it's reasonable that it could have come from a pangolin. I think it's reasonable that it could have come from a bat. And I don't. Okay, but, I'm I'm uncertain on the probabilities exactly. I'm not saying it's fifty fifty. I don't know if I'm leaning one way or another. Okay, but let's say if it came from a bat, is it your position? that the spelunking hypothesis has a higher prior probability than the eating of bats. So I actually possible. don't know the, yeah, I actually don't know the answer to that. That's where I'm, I'm getting it. And I know people are going to be, oh, spelunking, oh no, like, oh, it's crackpot, ridiculous. Like, I actually don't know. Um, I have, I, I know that there are a lot of bat eating. I also know that there's a lot of spelunking. I don't have an analysis comparing either one. And I don't have analysis comparing like some baseline probability of contracting a zoonotic disease from uh, consumption of it in the practices that they do, just like I don't have a baseline probability or any analysis of comparing um, contracting uh, that contracting a zoonotic disease of that nature from uh, bats in uh, going spelunking or just increased in general co uh, contact with uh, the wilderness and exposure to um, bat populations is a function of increasing population size. I don't actually know the answer to that. That's my position. I actually don't know. Okay, but I mean, again, I think from um, a general point of view, certain explanations are a very low probability when you. I know I agree that. with that, Evan. I, I a agree. Higher Evan, probability, Evan. Yeah, I, I get that, but in, I'm saying in this case, from my perspective, I actually don't. I can't see that being the case. I can't see it. So being you say it's fifty-fifty. No, I'm not saying. I'm saying it's unclear enough that I don't even know if it's fifty-fifty. I don't know. Is I'm not even. I'm not taking a position on the probability. Okay, I'm really confused then because you're upset okay. with other vegans mm -hmm. for ascribing too high of a probability to a hypothesis. Not too high of just too high of a probability. You are not willing wait, to ascribe wait, 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 any wait, wait, probability wait, wait, wait. to this hypothesis. Wait, 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 wait. My my issue with vegans is that it's not just that they ascribe a probability, is that they ascribe a probability with a given degree of confidence. It's not just that they take a position. Like for example, if if you said, you know what? I take, uh, you know, I lean, I take a 75% probability or 90 or 80% probability uh, that it came from the market. However, I come with the caveat with because there are issues with this, you know, I have like this confidence interval around that probability where I am really uncertain. And it, that confidence interval may even dip below the 50%. That I wouldn't take an issue with. The issue I take with vegans is that they present a probability that's not only high, but that the confidence interval around that probability is narrow. The way they're presenting it, you'd think they're like, it's not just that it's this high probability, it's like this probability and I'm pretty darn certain of it. That's my, the issue I take with vegans. Do you okay, appreciate well, the difference? So let's say, let's say we assign- uh, Wait, wait, Evan, just, just before we go on, do, do you appreciate the distinction between that? No, between what you said and what I'm I saying. Have, I have okay, to admit. so that's then we shouldn't move. Then we shouldn't move on. We should wait, wait. We shouldn't move on until we we, we get it. We do appreciate the difference. Okay, so you have a point es estimate and you have a confidence interval. Um, you can have a point estimate. It's same thing in, when you're evaluating a probability of something. We say, okay, and it's not that we are just computing what the exact probability is and outcomes a number and like this is we are certain that it's this prob like the probability like that's never how it works. With all of these estimates of, prob of probability, there's always a certain amount of confidence that we have based on well, all the assumptions that are inputting into the model. Everything is approximate yeah. depending on right, the right. scale and the measurement and where you're coming from. Absolutely. Yes, sure. And, and because of that, when we, someone gives a probability, it's not all probability estimates are equal. So when I say the reason I'm saying I, I don't even want to be comfortable giving a probability, the reason I'm saying is because I can give... I can give a point estimate. I can. It's just that the confidence interval around that point estimate is going to be so broad that it wouldn't be very meaningful for me to even give the point estimate. That's what I'm saying. Well, but I do think, again, if, even, if you, even if your point estimate has broad confidence intervals, 
you can treat, treat that with math. You can, you can handle that. So let's assume you have very broad confidence intervals for the Spelunking hypothesis, very broad confidence intervals for the bat consumption hypothesis, and very broad confidence intervals for the pangolin hypothesis, and then a smaller point estimate with smaller confidence intervals for some unknown intermediary or snakes that have been proposed or turtles that have been proposed, which have very poor data. Um, I, I think you can still then say, well, given that two of the very likely uh, uh, avenues for this are bat consumption and pangolin consumption, and the other likelihoods are seem to me to be smaller. Spelunking seems to me to be smaller. Okay, uh, see, I'm not clear on smaller confidence. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so I'm not, yeah. So the issue is I'm not, I don't, so everyone keeps saying like, oh, it seems to be smaller to me, spelunking, but I have never seen any like argument supporting that. I haven't like, here's what would convince me. Like if you could show me like, here's, okay, here's the number of people spelunking uh, per X given amount of time. Here's the number of people eating bats for X given amount of time. And here's the number of people eating penguins for X given amount of time. And if we compare it and we compare it all and we, and we look at like, uh, have some, um, some type of analysis of like, okay, we can try to estimate some baseline probability of someone going into a cave full of bat dung, uh, bat dropping, sorry, and compare that to, um, different the practices in accord with which people are eating bats or, or pangolins like we can start talking about something and getting clear like right now because we're just like honestly it just feels like we're guessing and we're pulling things out of our, our rectums here like i i really have very low confidence in even i i would think it would be laughable for me to even give a point estimate i can do it i can do it but i want to be clear to everyone listening to this like i would based on the data available i really would kind of be guessing here um so just so just yeah. to be clear though the the timeline to me Again, there's been mm -hmm. spelunking going on certainly since the 19th century. Uh, bat guano is present in virtually all caves. There's not a single documented proven case of someone getting a uh, mammalian respiratory virus from bat guano or spelunking. Okay, sure. see, that, see, when you do that, when you draw like the boundaries around like, okay, it has to be a virus, like, okay, yes, like, when you, yeah, so when you, so I, I'll agree, I don't know of a case where a specifically, for bat droppings, specifically, not just like a zoonotic disease, but a specifically a virus zoonotic disease has been transmitted to millions. I don't know. I have, I, I can look into it. Droplet. So you have Yeah, but there are droplets in, you don't think there are droplets in droppings? No, of course there are like droplets. Like that can be aerosolized? They, that can be aerosolized? They would be aerosolized by walking on them, typically. So right. They're going to okay. Up to your knees and not up to your nose. Oh, not that. That's people not necessary. Rub that shit on that's their nose. not necessary. Wait a minute. That's not Evan. Come on. That's not necessarily to the case. You don't know that they're not going to be aerosolized at the level of knees, and they're not going to get up to okay, the nose. Well, again, Especially if uh, it's multiple people. Say Wait, in, all I, of, <laughs> in all of human history, also, we it's have not no just that clear it's, case of this happening. I, I I get it in all of you, but also in all of human history, we we don't have a clear case of a bat consumption. Bad consumption also I transmitting agree to completely, uh, but we do have two clear yeah. cases of I I agree that's right but transmitting yep. a coronavirus yep. that's two yes, humans that I cause agree. severe respiratory yes. symptoms yes and the problem and the problem with that is we have a symmetry breaker in this case in this case in those cases when we did find those intermediates we had a ninety nine percent gene overall gene homology if not a hundred percent or like 99.9%. In this case, it's a striking 92%. There's a clear symmetry right here. That's my okay, problem. Did you, did you see the ACE receptor graphic that I posted in the-, in the I've, I've, Evan, I've read the, I've read the, I've not only have I seen the graphic, I've read the paper that where okay, that graphic- you see that it only from. differs at two loci in the-, in the I, I, I get it. I, I, and that, I, that is I, far I, I more closely it. related to SARS-CoV-2 than any of the bat yep. sequences. And, I, and what I want, and what I want, yep, and what I want is, a, is an analysis of why that supersedes this difference in overall gene homology. Okay, well. Could be right. Okay. But I, yeah, go ahead. So to me, the combination of those facts plus the opening of the market only two months before the outbreak plus the fact that two thirds of the initial set of cases were all from contact with the market. And before January 1, no healthcare worker had tested positive for SARS-CoV-2. No healthcare workers were in the initial group. So there was no spread 
in hospitals at that time. So some source. Yeah, God. Well, so if you're saying it's circulating from caves, then it would have circulated through healthcare uh, venues. Not necessarily. You can get if someone could have went to a cave and spread it asymptomatically, gone to well, a market and spread it asymptomatically. Okay, but the evidence for asymptomatic you, spread is not fantastic here. The evidence what? for, what States for asymptomatic spread is that it is a smaller likelihood of spread when you're asymptomatic than when you're symptomatic. Okay. Well, if that's the case, then we have real we have even bigger problems for the for for the market hi hypothesis. Then my then the the problem is even look if you can't have your cake no, and eat it too. You want to make that symptomatic people are still going to be walking past them. Well, no. Again, the again, the, the don't issue keep people away from a market. No, again, the problem if you want to make the case that it's uh, that the asymptomatic spread likelihood is less than before, then. The defense against the problem against the market hypothesis is even is even less robust because remember the first traced case had no contact with that market and then all of a sudden you have an outbreak in the market that's more compatible with it being brought from somewhere else from that market than rather than the market being the source of it now the defense for that is to say that well it was asymptomatic spread that really one of the cases that became symptomatic in the market was really asymptomatic and was really the first case, essentially. That's the defense. But if you want to you want to play down asymptomatic spread, that defense is less robust. So you can't have your cake and eat it too that way. No, no because I, I mean, again, my position is that, I mean, I, again, I think all we're arguing is over that 20% likelihood there at the top. And I just see the Probably, picture yeah. than you do. And I take into account certain evidence that you don't take into account. It's, this is very similar to when I have conversations with people about saturated fat, where I look at the entire oh. picture of evidence. Oh, stop, Evan. I look at the, stop. No, look at the no, actual no, no, you know, don't animal take studies. No, no, no. And I Evan, see Evan, a Evan, bigger, bigger picture than just Evan, you, trials. Evan, you so, got to stop. That's, not, that's a complete mischaracterization here. No, not at all. Look, I'm, it's, I'm not ignoring any facets of evidence. In fact, I, if I, anything else, I would say that there's facets of evidence. If anything, I think that you're playing down. You're ignoring without a formal analysis here. I think I think the spelunking hypothesis. I think that that I've put, I'm putting forward here. I think that there's data showing that uh, Corona uh, that Group C coronaviruses. Okay, but, I mean, Avi, come on, the spelunking. Is there a reported case? Of a person getting SARS-CoV-2. Okay, so the problem. Right, okay, so long. here's no, no, no. There, no, there isn't. However, right. there also isn't a reported case of someone consuming a bat. That doesn't. But I still That's view right. bat consumption as a as a reasonable, plausible candidate. Just like I, I'm going to view spelunking as a reasonable, plausible candidate. Like yeah. again, it's not a symmetry okay. breaker well, between bat consumption and spelunking. Well, okay, but so to implicate animal agriculture, bat consumption is just as much. An implication of animal agriculture, sure. as pangolins would be. So, of uh, the three well, wait, 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 just real, real quick. Wait, 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 wait. Bats, bats are typically the only caveat to that is bats are typically hunted, not not cultivated. So, no, they're also sold. No, they're, but they're sold in the wet markets. My under my under no, they're sold in the wet markets. I agree, but they typically right. come from hunting, not cultivating, not 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 from but, like they don't grow bats. And, but and, again, the and, wet market would be the source if it was bat consumption as well. Sure. No, I agree. I agree. It's just a semantic point. Like, I agree that if, yeah, look, I agree that bat consumption, look, bat, for me, bat consumption is a plausible candidate. We've so never had, we've never, wait. Yes, I agree. I agree. Bat consumption is a plausible candidate. I, we have never seen a case of a bat directly giving cor a coronavirus or any virus for that matter to a human uh, from Agreed. consumption, from, not from, there's biting, whatever, that's rabies, sure. But, I, in spite of that, I still think, because of the limited sample size of what we're looking at, I still think that's a very plausible candidate. And I see, I would say the same thing for spelunking. I would also say the same thing for a pangolin. Now, so, so, yeah, to, go ahead. And, and just to get to the spelunking again, it is your take that it is possible that all the epidemiologists in Wuhan and the Chinese government missed the spelunking connection. Yeah. Yeah, I okay. do. Especially when you look when you especially when you, you yeah, absolutely. And the World especially Health Organization also missed that and so did the CDC. I'm not saying I'm not saying okay, 
I'm not, I don't even, I don't know if they have considered or not considered it even. I'm not saying, I don't want to say that they missed it. Um, Let, maybe they did. They I don't know, but yeah. It. Okay. Then, if they then didn't they consider it, then I think it's a, I think it's a plausible. Yeah. I think it's a plausibility. Of course. Okay. Well, we should write up a paper. I I just finished writing one up, so maybe I can write one up on this one. But look, I yeah. mean, I, I don't see why it, look, I, I, here's the thing. Here's the deal. Like appealing to the WHO and appealing to the governmental organizations. I mean, it's it, it fundamentally, that's a, an appeal to authority. I'm not saying you're making the appeal to authority, but look, it, it's in this no, attempt I'm not to making say, well, I, what's the idea? I'm, I, okay. I'm making an appeal to evidence that should be there for a live hypothesis that we don't see. I'm Wait, but you could say the same thing for bats then. You could say the same oh, no, for bat I, consumption. Well, my personal opinion is bat consumption is, is pretty much very unlikely. It's on the same level as spelunking. I would give spelunking and bat consumption comparable levels. Um, I don't think either, because again, looking at the past history, for me, the past history of how coronavirus uh, epidemics have happened makes it highly likely that there was a secondary mammalian intermediate here. And I think the evidence that we have, while not nearly as compelling yet for pangolins as for civets or for camels, is compelling enough to say 90% probability that it was from pangolins. Okay. I don't, I don't know how you get to 90% probability, but regardless, I, the way people are making the claim, I wouldn't even think they're putting it at 90%. That's the, my biggest gripe here. My biggest gripe here is the way I see the confidence with pe the way people are claiming here. It seems like they're making I, at least 90, 95, if not 99% confidence that this came from animal agriculture with a very low margin of error. Like that's, that's what I see going on. And even if, it, even, if like, I would, even if it was like 80% for me, I would say like, wait a minute, we should like hold out a bit on this. It's looking, that, it's like looking strongly that way now, but like I, would, I wouldn't be like very confidently um, putting that forward because guess what? Like, if it's eighty percent probability, yeah, we could. There's a very realistic chance we could be wrong on this. Twenty okay, percent happens about twenty percent of the time. We're, assume we're wrong on pangolins. That still means that half of the, no, no, no. I'm, I'm including. I'm left. including. Look, look. No, I'm including. I'm including. Um, I, when I say twenty percent, I'm including. I'm subsuming everything that is non-animal agriculture, like vector. Uh, I'm, not, I'm saying okay. like all the animal agriculture vector is like this. Let's just say all the animal agriculture vector. We add up all the probabilities. Turns out to eighty percent. And all the non-animal agriculture vector, whether it be spelunking, whether it be just just being randomly and have a random interaction, or whether it be some other cause that we haven't thought of yet, uh, turns out to be twenty percent. Um, okay. So, or even or even ninety percent. Like would even if, yeah. would you divide that twenty percent space up evenly between spelunking and other activities, or would you put spelunking as just one of many other possible? I, I haven't. I haven't. I probably one of probably one of one of other, i don't know i actually don't know it was i would probably say that there's pro, it's probably one of uh, one of others but i haven't really thought of it in depth all i'm saying now is the way people like here, here's the main crux of the claim the main gripe i have is that people are making this claim way way more even if it's 90 percent with the degree of confidence i hear people making this claim you would think they're they're all they're as certain as sars one and they're a certain and in fact they use it in the same breath but they, you they use very, it in the same sense. When we talked earlier today on Twitter, you weren't very certain of SARS-1. Uh, when I talked on Twitter, I wasn't very... Well, I'm still not as certain as you are on SARS-1. Um, okay, I but, still... I haven't... And the reason... And the primary reason is... And I admit, as I admitted in the beginning of this conversation, the primary reason is, is because... And I, as I've said on Twitter as well, that the primary reason is I haven't done as deep of a dive on SARS-1 as SARS-2. But I'm granting for the sake of the conversation that it was the case. So, but, um, so for yeah, me, that's ahead. big evidence. SARS-1 and MERS are big evidence for me. And they do push that probability of SARS-CoV-2 up so high for me in combination with the lack of a really good alternative explanation. And, and to me, okay, so I'm just, lack of a really yeah. good alternative explanation is evidence in favor of a plausible but yet not, not yet proven hypothesis. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I guess the, oh, look, we're, I think we're going in circles a bit here. I mean, I guess, uh, again, the, the issues with the SARS, the issue with the other two cases, I, again, the, the reason it doesn't push it up for me is because there are symmetry breakers and I ha the answers for these symmetry breakers that haven't been satisfactory. Um, and because the answers that are being proposed for the, um, the, the, the market um, <clears throat> alternatives, um, sure there could be, but then you have issues of, well, 
you have issues of, well, why didn't we see an outbreak in another area? Why did we see an outbreak in a market where it didn't come from? If it, if it did, it couldn't be an alternative. The other uh, attempts at reconciling is that asymptomatic period. But then if you play down the asymptomatic period, then you, it works against you. Um, and then the uh, overall gene homology is lower. Um, and yes, the, the receptor homology is, is higher. Again, I don't know what ends up superseding the other. Um, and then the other issue is that I, I really haven't heard a strong case. Other, the only thing said about okay, spelunking the is that we've never... Yeah. You, you know there, that there can be lateral transfer within viruses. So if there's lateral transfer, then that within would... Within coronavirus of your overall, Yeah, that would take care of your overall symmetry issue. And the furin cleavage um, side would be transfer is possible here. Okay, so wait. So lateral transfer of a human... So lateral transfer of a human coronavirus. No, no, no. Lateral um, transfer of parts of a coronavirus RNA segment from one virus to another. In the same way that plasma. How does that explain? Okay, but how does that plants, explain? Okay, plants, genomes, and uh, and and uh, bacteria can undergo plasma. Uh, I, I yeah, no, I get that. I understand that. But how does that explain why all the other intermediates that have been shown to be the case? So have it's possible that the pangolin, the, the pan original pangolin coronavirus was from a distinct bat strain that was not closely related to the RATG13 and so has significant overall genome homology differences, but that it had lateral transfer of the receptor which is what created the virulence in humans. I, I know, I get, I get, Evan, I, I understand the hypothesis. I get it. But so, what I'm asking so is how is that, that, like, what and I'm asking is how does that explain why in all the other cases we don't see that? In the other cases where we've seen these intermediaries, we see right. nothing, we don't see this like lateral transfer thing where it's not an overall gene homology that's strong. Well, there's, a, there's clearly something about this particular SARS-CoV-2 that's sui generis. It's, a got a much higher R naught. It's much more virulent. It's uh, causing a much much longer period of illness. So there's a lot that's unique about it. I'm not disputing that. Right, but right, but you're just saying it's unique doesn't get you. You have to show a unique thing that's tied into so, this lateral transfer. So the question would be: is it, 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 And again, there's no answer to this. But it is it, to me to the for your symmetry breaker of the overall genome homology. That is a reasonable answer for that symmetry breakage, if there was a lateral transfer. Yeah, but or, or if it, or, or 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 if it just didn't come, or if it didn't, or that it just didn't come from pangolins. That's another possibility too. Well, right, and it's also possible that one of the you know so that some established coronavirus in bats that was not uh, transmittable through humans got into a pangolin and then got to a human and was transmittable in humans. And okay, so the issue is, so here's the issue, Evan. I have no way of evaluating which one. Yeah, sure, but, but I, I just have no way of evaluating. Evan, this, yes, all. sure. But, yes, Evan, my, again, again, like none of this, none of this is going against my, any position I've ever taken. Like, yes, so all, I grant all of these things. I just don't, I'm hearing myself not going, Evan. Yeah, well, yeah. Okay. So, I'm just I'm just not getting how that makes it just so all these make just so likely that this came from animal agriculture. I'm not seeing an analysis of these probabilities. But we I'd like to I'd like and like by the way, by the way, if you look at these publications that have these assertions, they even even in these publications where that um where those uh figures you guys came from, the authors gotta are, not hold down push to talk when the other's talking, it creates a echo for everybody. Right. Right. Sorry. If you actually look at the authors that are writing these manuscripts, even when they, even when they, including the the publication that you mentioned about the um, ACE receptor and how homologous it was, those authors themselves describe it as an open question. Um, what was their exact I, I, wording? I, I would um, challenge you to find scientific articles that don't regard their topic as an open question in the in the discussion. That's pretty much the yeah, two. saturated. Yeah, saturated. Uh, LDL causing CVD is an example of that. Um, they, in fact, there's a paper titled LDL, you know the paper title. Um, it's it's very conclusive, LDL causes CVD. Um, it's not further regarded as necessary in, is what they say, though. No, I don't even think further, like in terms of LDL causing CVD, um, Actually, I've, I've also seen, uh, or, or, or whether a vaccines cause autism or whether aluminum causes 
um, the aluminum vaccine cause autism. Like I've see, actually seen specifically them say, um, no, there actually is not um, required more evidence. It'll be a waste of money in, in publications. Um, there you are know, examples where you can bring that. Another case is uh, use of morphine and opioid uh, dependence. Say they say no further study should be done. It should be work. Money should be spent on getting patients treatment. But the vast majority of scientific sure. publications, sure, certainly but, in an area as novel as this, are going to yes. end with a statement. Like yeah, that. yeah, yes. But but I think that's for a good reason. I think that's not like just them covering their asses here. Like I think that <laughs> I think this is really really novel. I think there's a whole lot more we don't know than we do know. I think even I even what of the things we do know, I haven't seen any clear reason to ascribe a re like this very super high probability of animal agriculture compared to, yes, spelunking, compared to other things we don't know, compared to inadvertent contact. Um, so, and, I, and all the things that are brought, ha I've, had, I've seen symmetry breakers for, and then I haven't heard, I, I just still haven't heard clear responses to them I, that, that are convincing and compelling. So I think we're running this conversation like, unless there's something more you have to say, um, I think, no, no, I think no. I, I, yeah. I feel like I've answered your symmetry breakers in, to the best way that I know how. And I don't think we have a fundamental disagreement here. Um, we just have a, a, a slight mathematical adjustment agreement or disagreement. Well, here's um, where I think we could find agreement. Adam. Like, I, here's, here I see, here's what I think we can agree on. And I want to make this clear to anyone like listening here who's going to like straw man me and take, not you, Evan, but like the, the, vegans who are going to go crazy on me because of my views on this and they're going to like just to be clear here's what I, evan and i will agree on we both agree that animal agriculture has caused many many pandemics we both agree that it would be better if we eliminated animal agriculture not just for ethical reasons but for yeah well, this is one of the, just one more reason just one more cherry on top that animal agriculture will is very likely to that it has caused uh, pandemics in the past and will almost certainly cause future pandemics. And we would be better off as a species if we eliminated animal agriculture. It causes um, every I, I, annual influenza epidemic, for example. Yeah, the influenza, exactly, with the, with the antigenic shift in, um, with the antigenic shift in uh, pigs uh, and uh, the occasional avian. The avian. Which what? What, Evan? It's primarily ducks and chickens in South Asia that are the, the reservoir species for the influenza virus. For influenza A? Flu A and B. Okay. Um, why did I read it? Why did I read it a thing about pigs? Okay, I don't know. Well, pigs are a that. secondary host. So oh, again, okay, that's why. Okay. The okay. flying animals care are the are the things that carry the actual virus yeah, yeah. all the yeah. time, and then they get to a closer to humans, mammalian intermediate, they evolve, become more virulent, and then they transmit directly to humans, and it's very bad for you. Right. Okay. That's why. And and they trend, and there there's a secondary. Are pigs a secondary reservoir for it, or am I? Uh, yes, pigs can, can be a secondary reservoir, okay. and they can also be a. a um, primary source because of farming practice. Okay. So, so just to be clear on what we agree on, we agree on pandemics very likely being caused by animal agriculture, both in the past, in the future. Um, we would have far less pandemics uh, if, and less disease in general, um, especially infectious disease, if we were to get rid of animal agriculture. So Evan and I, for anyone listening, Evan and I completely agree on this. Um, and, that's and not a problem. Yeah. Saying, you're, you're saying the decline in disease would be primarily an infectious disease, and no, 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 I, I, no, 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 no. I think there will be other diseases as well that would. But I'm saying, especially when it comes to these specific diseases that we're talking about, pandemic. Uh, yeah, correct. Absolutely, we completely agree. Yeah, um, whole different hosts of sources of food poisoning. Um, yeah, there's plenty. There's plenty of diseases that not not limited to infectious disease. Uh, we could talk about heart disease. We could talk about cancer. I think that there would be very, there would be a whole slew of diseases. But yes, for the sake of this conversation, we're talking about infectious diseases. Yes. So Evan and I are not in disagreement about this. The only point of disagreement is our probabilistic assessment of this specific infectious agent for anyone here listening. So the, at this point, the claim I make and the claim I, I say we should be making is that um, at this point, it's a plausible candidate, and it may even may even be probable that this came from animal agriculture. I don't know if it's probable, but 
what we, what we definitely can say is that when we look at the track record of animal agriculture, it has contributed to us having pandemic after pandemic. And even if this doesn't turn out to be caused by animal agriculture, I do think it's going to in inevitably, animal agriculture will inevitably cause a pandemic, even if this one doesn't, doesn't result from animal agriculture, it turns out. In the future, there will be more. There will be. And there will be more that are less devastating than this, and there will be more that are more devastating than this. And it's just one more reason for us to end animal agriculture, regardless of whether SARS-CoV-2 ends up coming from agri animal agriculture or not. And I think that's a note we can agree on. Completely agree on that. And yeah, I need to get going too. So I'm going to let you finish off on that. That's fine. All right. Well, thanks for your time, Evan. No problem. I enjoyed it. All right. Take care.